Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about heart murmurs in cats. So if your cat has a heart murmur and you want to be a more informed and educated pet owner, keep watching because we're going to talk about why cats could have a murmur, what we can do about it, and a way you can monitor your cat at home for free by counting their resting respiratory rate. Remember, this is general advice only. It is not specific advice for your cat. And if you have any concerns or your cat's acting sick, please contact your vet. So heart murmurs in cats is something we often find on their routine physical exam. So they're usually not coming in with any symptoms. We're just doing their wellness exam and we happen to hear a heart murmur. And I know it can sound really scary when the vet tells you there's a murmur in their heart, but really all a murmur is, is a whooshing sound that we can hear through the stethoscope of in between the heartbeats. So normally a heartbeat just sounds like ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, but with a murmur we're hearing whoosh bum, whoosh bum, something like that. So we grade heart murmurs on a scale of one to six. One is the lowest, quietest murmur. Grade six is a really loud, obvious murmur. Most adult cats are gonna get diagnosed with a grade two or three the first time that we hear the murmur. Also having a heart murmur in a cat is not always actually a problem. So there are several different diseases that can cause it, which we're gonna talk about, but about 20% of cats with a heart murmur actually don't have any disease. So there is a possibility that we go through all the testing and we find no problem, which is good, but we can never assume that's the case without doing the testing. A common point of confusion that I have encountered is that people think a heart murmur is the same as heart failure. And it's actually very different. A heart murmur is just that sound that we're hearing. It doesn't really tell us what the cause is or how serious the disease is. Heart failure is when the heart can no longer function, it can't push blood forward the way it needs to. This leads to really severe problems like difficulty breathing, um, fluid buildup in the lungs, and is a really serious condition where your cat's gonna be acting really sick. We're gonna talk more about that later. But if your cat's acting normal, eating, breathing comfortably, we can be pretty confident they're not in heart failure. So what are some things that can cause a heart murmur in a cat? So if your cat is just a kitten and they have a heart murmur, there's only two main reasons that a healthy kitten would have a heart murmur. One is gonna be what we call an innocent murmur or a kitten murmur. That's the best case scenario. It's usually a really quiet murmur that actually goes away as they get older. So by the time they come in for their one year old exam, the murmur is usually gone in those cases. The other possibility for kittens is a lot more serious, however. If they have a loud murmur or the murmur persists after one year old, then we have to think about congenital defects. So they could have been born with their heart not formed correctly. Um, there can be a lot of different variations of this and some of them require surgery. So it is something we take seriously in a kitten. In an adult cat, we usually will hear a heart murmur after maybe seven years old. Uh, it's pretty uncommon to hear a murmur before that. And like I said, most adult cats with a heart murmur are asymptomatic. We're not seeing any symptoms at home. So it always is good when we can catch it early and try to find the cause before they have symptoms. So very important to bring your cat in for their annual wellness exam. So in adult cats, like I said, they can have a murmur that has no underlying cause, what we call an innocent heart murmur. But we have to do some testing to figure out whether that's the case. And we're mostly gonna talk in this video about healthy adult cats where we find a murmur, but if you have a sick cat, they could have a heart murmur for other reasons like anemia or severe dehydration. But for the majority of adult cats, there's the three H's that are the most common causes. Number one is hyperthyroidism. Number two is hypertension. And number three is HCM or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And we're gonna go into each of those in detail. So hyperthyroidism is an overactive thyroid gland. This is a small gland located in the neck and when they're making too much thyroid hormone, it actually makes the body kind of go into overdrive, like hyper metabolism. So the cats will usually be really hungry, they wanna eat everything, but they're actually losing weight. Sometimes they're actually more active and vocalizing more than usual. Their hair coat can look a little less glossy and nice than usual. And we'll often actually see chronic vomiting as well. The nice thing about hyperthyroidism is it's treatable. So either with long-term medications, switching their diet, or there actually is a cure called radioactive iodine or I-131 treatment. We're not gonna go into that in detail, um, but there are lots of treatments available for hyperthyroidism and it can actually reverse the heart disease part of it if we can get that controlled. Number two is hypertension or, or high blood pressure. High blood pressure is actually very common in cats and it can be because of hyperthyroidism also can be because of chronic kidney disease or because of heart disease. So it can be kind of a vicious cycle. But high blood pressure often doesn't have any symptoms either. So we often can't find it unless we test for it. And hypertension, if it's prolonged and really high, can cause a lot of problems. 
It can make the heart disease worse. It can make kidney disease worse. And it can actually cause sudden blindness from retinal detachment, which is often irreversible. So it is super, super important for us to check the blood pressure in any cat with a heart murmur. And just in senior cats in general, it's a good idea to do as a screening test. Number three of the H's is HCM or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is a structural heart disease. It can be caused by genetics. So some cats are predisposed to it because of their breed. If they're on this breed list, they are potentially predisposed to getting this condition. But really any cat can get it. With HCM, the heart muscle becomes thickened in the ventricle. So that's the part that actually pumps the blood out of the heart. The muscle thickens inward so that the little cavity where blood is supposed to be becomes smaller. So they no longer can get enough blood there and they can't push it out strongly enough to make the heart function correctly. There are some other structural heart diseases cats can get, but they're pretty rare, so we're not gonna go into them here. So how worried should you be if your cat gets diagnosed with HCM? It really depends on the severity of the disease at the time of diagnosis. The majority of cats overall with HCM will never go into heart failure, which is great, um, but if it's caught at a later stage and if you do the echocardiogram, which we'll talk about later, and they have left atrial enlargement and pretty severe disease, the prognosis is gonna be worse. But the majority of cats are gonna be caught in an early stage. And in the studies, they showed that after five years, two out of three cats were still alive, which is pretty good considering that it's usually diagnosed at a later age. And even if they do go into heart failure, they often can still get two years of survival time with medications as long as they respond well. Okay, so you find out your cat has a heart murmur, what are we gonna do about it? So number one is we're gonna to try to look for the cause. The first step is going to be blood work because that's how we check for hyperthyroidism. We can measure the total T4, which is their thyroid hormone, and most of the time that's gonna give us the diagnosis. We also on the blood work wanna make sure and check the kidneys to make sure there's no reason for hypertension. And we'd be checking for things like anemia or other illnesses that could be causing the heart murmur. And whether or not they have hyperthyroidism, we also wanna check a blood pressure because hyperthyroidism can cause high blood pressure but other things can too, so we always wanna make sure and get a blood pressure in any cat with a heart murmur. Um, if they have hypertension or high blood pressure, we are gonna start them on medication, often amlodipine, or there are other options as well. That's usually a lifelong medication, but they usually work really well and can get that blood pressure controlled. Then if we're not finding an obvious cause, the next step is going to be an echocardiogram. This is an ultrasound of the heart, they can be pretty pricey, so not everyone is always able to do it, but that's kind of the gold standard to try to figure out what the actual cause is of the murmur. Things like HCM, the only way to diagnose that is with an echo, echocardiogram, we call it an echo. So this is something that often has to be done with a cardiologist specialist, but sometimes uh, some clinics will have technicians come out and do the scans and have a cardiologist look at it. In an echocardiogram, you can actually see the heart itself, so we can find out exactly why this murmur is happening. Or if there's no cause for it, this is the best way to rule out any underlying cause. Some of the biggest things they're looking for on that echocardiogram are going to be left atrial enlargement. The left atrium is one of the chambers of the heart, and if it gets enlarged, that just means the heart disease is more severe, and it puts them at more risk of getting blood clots, which is one of the things we worry about in cats. If they form blood clots that escape the heart and get out into the bloodstream, the blood clot can actually go to other places. So it can go to one of their limbs is the most common in cats, so one of their legs, and block the blood supply to that leg, which is extremely painful. They're not able to use the leg anymore. Unfortunately, that is a very bad prognosis if that happens, and most cats end up being put to sleep if that occurs. Luckily, it's not super common, but it is a possibility. One other test I wanna talk about is the ProBNP blood test. This is a protein that's released from the heart muscle when it's under stress. It's not a perfect test because you can get false positives, so it can be elevated even if the heart disease is not severe, and it can vary day to day. So it's not perfect, but it can give us some information. If it's really high, that would just push us more towards saying this is probably a severe heart disease that we need to look into further. If it was low, maybe we can wait a little bit and monitor the heart murmur. Another way you might wanna use the ProBNP test is for those at-risk breeds. So some vets will actually screen those breeds on a regular basis with that ProBNP because it's actually possible for cats to have heart disease without having a heart murmur. So just like about 20% of cats with a heart murmur don't have disease, about 20% of cats with heart disease don't have a murmur. So it is always possible to miss it and that's why we might wanna think about doing that screening test. And one other test that I wanna talk about is x-rays. 
so x-rays of the chest, they are actually not very helpful in the early stages of having a heart murmur. Most heart disease is not gonna be visible on an x-ray in cats. I usually won't do an x-ray unless I just want to get a baseline. So if they ever do come in in heart failure, I'll have that comparison. So let's talk a little bit about what heart failure is. With just a heart murmur, cats are usually not sick, they're acting normal, you wouldn't even know it was there if you didn't listen for it. But when they go into heart failure, that is the end stage of heart disease, where the heart is no longer functioning properly, can't push blood out into the body like it needs to, and it kind of creates a backup in the blood vessels. This creates pressure in the vessels, which then lets fluid leak out into other parts of the body, which is extremely dangerous. In cats, it usually happens in the lungs, so they end up getting fluid into the lungs, which is called pulmonary edema, or they get fluid accumulating around their lungs, which is called pleural effusion. Either one of those puts a lot of pressure on the lungs so they're not able to inflate or get oxygen uh, sufficiently, so the cats end up breathing heavily, struggling to breathe, or breathing through their mouth, which is very not normal for cats. Most of the time we don't actually see coughing in cats like we do in dogs with heart failure. Cats, it's usually they're focusing on breathing, they're breathing really heavily and fast, and often they're not wanting to eat, they're lethargic, they're hiding, they're just not acting normal, and you just see that chest going up and down, really struggling. If you ever see that, that is an emergency, go right to the emergency room. So our main goal when they have a heart murmur is to never let them get into heart failure. We wanna to try to avoid that at all costs. So how can we treat cats with a heart murmur? So if it ends up being hyperthyroidism, like I talked about before, we would start them on the specific treatment for that. Same with high blood pressure, we're gonna start treatment for that and look for an underlying reason for that high blood pressure. With HCM, the structural or other structural heart diseases, at this point, we actually don't have any specific treatment we can do for cats to slow down their risk of going into heart failure. However, hopefully by the end of this month, actually July, 2025, they say we are gonna have a new drug released to help cats with HCM, which is very exciting. Um, of course, it's not fully released yet, but it is conditionally approved and I'm very excited to try using it. Also, a lot of cats with heart disease, if they have that enlarged left atrium or there's signs of blood clots on their echocardiogram, we might start them on a blood thinner like Clavix, or, which is also called Clopidogrel. And occasionally cats will be on other heart drugs if they go to a cardiologist, things like beta blockers. Your vet might also recommend supplements, sometimes things like fish oil, or specific heart supplements might be recommended, but definitely talk to your vet about whether that's a recommendation for your cat. Now, the best thing you can do actually, since we don't at this time have a way to slow it down, is monitoring your cat at home. And we really, as vets, we really count on the pet owners to do this, and it is totally free and very easy. Uh, this is called the resting respiratory rate. So you're really counting their breathing rate when they're fast asleep. You can't use this test if they're awake, running around, you know, looking at birds, they might be breathing fast just because they're excited or they heard a noise or something like that. So you have to do it when they're fully sleeping and peaceful and you just set a timer and you count their breaths. So up and down is one, up and down two. You count how many times they breathe in a minute. So you can either do a full minute on your phone or you can do you know, 15 seconds and multiply it by four to get that amount over a minute. Um, whichever way you wanna do it, the amount of breaths per minute should be under 30 breaths in a minute. Many cats end up being in the 15 to 20 range, but the really important thing is to know the trend for your cat. So when they first get diagnosed with a heart murmur, start tracking whenever you catch them napping, take a measurement of their resting respiratory rate at home and just keep a little journal most important is the trend. So if your cat's always around 20 to 25 and then one day you check it and it's 35, that's something concerning. If it's ever over 40 breaths in a minute while they're sleeping, that is also concerning and you should bring them into the vet. The reason that we do this test is when fluid starts to back up into the lungs or around the lungs, the first sign is going to be a slight increase in the breathing rate as they're trying a little bit harder to breathe because of that fluid. And since cats are so good at hiding their symptoms, sometimes they will continue to act normal other than the breathing rate. So they'll often just keep eating, keep acting normal in the early stages until it becomes really severe and becomes an emergency. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.